so my topic, um, it, it's really, this is just going to be me rambling now. Um, oh, so chime I in whenever. I was born a rambling man. Who sings that? Uh, I want oh. to say Waylon Jennings, but I'm not 100% sure. Steely Dan? Is it? I don't know. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, uh, it's it's definitely an old country I'm singer. Give me more work. It's definitely an old country singer. I want to say Waylon Travis Jennings. Travis Bernard. He was a singer, right? Travis Bernard. I don't know. We can Google it. No. <laughs> I don't think Travis. I mean, he might be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll there find be, out. There's some guy with a hat. Travis Tritt. Like, I'm Tra- I know that. Travis Tritt. Oh God. Um, that's actually a country name I know. I know like four country singers. Like I don't know anything about country. Nothing. I really don't. I know Kenny Chesney was a it was a big name and Garth Brooks were a big name. Um, Underhill Underwood Carrie, Carrie Underwood she's Carrie big, Underwood she's big right Yep she's still big Well I also think that she was on um, American Idol American Idol Yes See I know some which, shit people Which I think she was one of the few that actually had like a career a career Kelly Clarkson and her are the only two I think Yeah uh, there was one guy at least um, I remember I met one of them before who, I met Bobice I met him. He was the guy with the long, I don't know yeah. who that is. Yeah, I was working. I was an intern. He had big shoulders, and he didn't win it, but he was like the runner-up, and he's like some guy with like really long hair. And um, I Because there was, there was one of the guys, yeah. and I, I can't remember his name. He was more like a male alt-rock singer. Sure. And he actually, I think he performed with Queen. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, oh, wow. And I just, I can't remember what his name is. Hmm. So we'll we'll air that air and fix that fact next week as well. Yeah. Slash, maybe I'll actually listen to some American Idol dude's music. Hmm. So my topic is kind of like a clusterfuck of a lot of different things. <laughs> sure. Um, I, I've tried to sum it down into one word. Okay. Guilt. Mm. But it's, I, I know for a fact that these stories or the what's going on right now is not all contributed to guilt. Sure. And I think I just put this, um, guilt is just the, the best way to people, I think, to empathize or the best to identify. But... If you don't know me, I put a lot of pressure on myself. I put a lot. I'm very, very critical of myself. Um, I'm always striving to be better, to be do more. So I'm my worst critic. Um, so like none of these stories have anything to do with each other. And it's just like when I say stories, all these things have been going on recently. It's just that I don't know. This therapy, it's therapy for me right now. Sure, you're you're the you're the professor, you professor Brahas. <laughs> Get your pen and notepad out. Um, I left it at home. That's why I took the picture of it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I had a um, audition on Wednesday. Okay, and it was an on camera audition, and it wasn't for anything particularly. It was like a showcase where you you know you you read some uh, sides, you talk to the camera, mention who you are, blah blah blah, and then they post this video and your information to a bunch of talent agencies and 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 potential uh, people who are recruiting looking for talent and i fucking bombed it like yep. and honestly it isn't even if i did bomb it it doesn't matter because i still have the option to like agree to put it up or not it's not like again it's not like it was a commercial for budweiser or something like that and i read my lines i didn't get the part it's not like that it was more of like a like i said a showcase where i say some things trying to like show like showcase who i am so people see potential in if they want to hire me for a commercial. So or is it like that. okay? So is it's kind of just like a very broad kind of general like almost kind of like a LinkedIn, but for audition in a way. But it's very select. And okay. It's very. It's not like for anyone can do it. You have to pay for it, or you have to have connections and blah blah blah. Um, Ooh, connections. Yeah, connections. Uh, I should have Connie on here because Connie is the one who introduced it to me, and she did the showcase as well. Um, so I was very. Um, been very stressed out recently and uh, I didn't do well on the audition. Um, I was in my head a lot for, during it. And, you know, I'm like, and this is part of the reason why we do this podcast. So I'm get on camera presence. And right. at the same time, the only difference is, you know, we're doing this shit on the fly. We're making things up, which I always prefer. Sure. But memorizing lines and then speaking to a camera is a completely different monster. And that's why I give a lot of people credit who have like, you can just look at a script get it down in a couple seconds and look to a camera and just nail it. Like that is so hard. You have no idea. And there's a reason why some people are on the camera because they're so freaking good at it. Honest confession. Yeah. I've had a team of writers this entire time. Uh, All of the opinions expressed were theirs. And you didn't share this at all with me. (laughs) I'm the one going on the fly and you have the one reading cue cards (laughs) or memorizing lines before every show. You son of a bitch. Why, why do you think I don't have that much time? (laughs) I spent a lot of time trying to memorize these lines from writers. That's the next topic right there. 
Um, so, um, what they tell you in the acting and improv and all that auditioning world, if you're doing anything like that, the best thing you do, this is what you do, is you go to your audition, you do whatever you can do, and you walk away and move on. You don't dwell about it, you don't right. think about it. And I did that. I mean, let me rephrase that. I did it for 24 hours of sulking and being pissed off at myself, but that's very common for me after. Sure. And for, you know the expression, just sleep on it? Yeah. That's all I need to do sometimes. I, slept right. I feel fine, and I feel fine about it, but I'm just going back to talk about it because this is a podcast and we open up on this podcast and some people might identify with it. Right. Um, so, you know, it gets to me again, this is not a guilt thing, but it's, it's just this, I need to listen to my more advice, my own advice more. If someone did this and I said, Hey, like you did everything you could, you move on, walk away and you take the next project on because that's what they tell you in the industry. You, you embrace failure. You get a fail 99% of the time, 99% sure. of the time. I think Mark Ruffalo did a, a great article on this. You know how many auditions and things he did? Until he, was, he wasn't really big until what? Like He wasn't big in his teens and 20s at all. I know no. that. Jeremy Renner is another excellent example. Exactly. And he didn't, uh, my, he didn't really well, get a good start until he was like 40. Yeah. I, Alan Rickman's my one of my heroes, uh, current like everyday heroes. May he rest in peace. It was really tough when he died because I really looked up to Alan Rickman. He didn't get his first start till he was 43, and he that was Die Hard. <laughs> um, so think about that. He was in the industry for 20 years. Yippee and ki a. That's right. Yeah. But what a stud, Alan Rickman. Big time. Um, so I think it's just a big thing. Uh, I'm just saying, like, it's tough not to dwell on something and not feel, like, bad about it or yourself. It's like you just, you know, you did what you can do. You move on. Now, I mean, I can go up to this guy and say, like, I don't want this post anymore. I don't want you to submit this because I was not happy with it. Um, and I haven't watched the footage yet because I just know I was not myself during this. And that's what sucks because I want to be myself. And I was really, really uncomfortable. I was really hot. I, memorizing lines I hate. Um, but you have to do it if you want to do that. In the sure. Yeah. And honestly, I could just say it was just practice. And honestly, to tell you the truth, it's up there. It's not like it, I don't think it would hurt me. But... I don't know if it would help. It definitely wouldn't help me, but it wouldn't hurt me. That's all I really care about is it would hurt me. Like, I'm never going to cast this guy or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it's funny that you say that because I personally, like, this has been one of my mantras in life. And it, it unfortunately took me a very long time to realize it. The whole not dwelling on things. Yeah. Because I spent a good period of time in my youth, in my like early 20s, dwelling the, on... That's the topic. Not dwelling on things. Because yeah. that's not necessarily a guilt thing, not dwelling on things. Please right. continue. No, that's the that, one I that's, want to that's, that's, that's exactly it. I, I spent a good period of my early 20s dwelling on things. Uh, it's a horrible existence. Yeah. When you, when you can't let go of something or when, you, when it rides around on top of you and it weighs you down, when you finally figure out how to break those chains, so to speak... It's one of the most gratifying feelings in the world. Absolutely. And when I say it's been kind of my personal mantra for, I don't know, maybe the last like seven, eight years, maybe longer, maybe not, it's, it doesn't just apply. It applies to every, well, yeah, it doesn't, it's not that it just applies. It, it applies to everything. Mm -hmm. um, relationships. I meet oh, people, yeah. I meet people who walk in and out of my life all the time. Um, I ain't going nowhere, right, buddy. Right. And for me, it's just always one of those things where it's like, uh, Oops, sorry. no, you're good. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, Hey, uh, I met this person here. Uh, you know, if it's say like dating, uh, we went on a date, had a lot of fun for whatever reason. It didn't work out. Okay. And I just keep moving forward. And I think that's the thing yeah. with just getting older and experience yeah. too. It's just like, you know, in high school, a girl like you can, it's like the most important thing. It's like the most devastating thing ever. Right. Like, that we were gonna be together. We were gonna go to prom, go steady, get married, and have babies, and then we were gonna get a yacht. Everyone thinks that, by the way, in high school, everybody, um, especially the yacht part. That was that was my main goal. Yep. Still don't have it. Everyone's yet. Isn't it everyone's still time. goal in life to get a yacht. There's still time. <laughs> um, but no, not just not just in that. Like, and uh, you know, it's. It's been with jobs. It's sure. been in professional relationships where I, I've met people in professional relationships where I know that for whatever reason, this person just has some kind of grudge against me. And I'm just like, okay, wh whatever. I, I don't hold a grudge against you. Uh, we had one rift. If you're going to keep holding yeah. it against me, then I can work around you. I, it doesn't bother and me. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to let it concern me. I just, it just rolls. And that's just the thing, bye. too. And then I'm like, I'm pretty good with that now, especially at work. 
I'm fantastic at that at work. Like if shit goes down at work, like all right, shit happened, move on. You know, I'm yeah. doing my job. It's, I'm complaining. Oh my god, we need this now. You do it. I'm like all right, whatever. Get it done. Move on. People, you know, I've always come in kind of like a people person. I just always want to please everybody. But I've learned this more and more, especially in the entertainment industry and comedy. And it's like you got to be a dick sometimes, or you got to, you know, you can't please everybody. It's impossible to have everyone like you. Um, and honestly, there's a lot of people I don't like. So like, why would you expect everyone to like you if you don't like everybody? Right. You know what I'm saying? There was an instance, um, about same time, same day when I went to your old stomping grounds, um, went to second city and I had to do a favor for a buddy. Um, uh, had to drop off something for him. Um, and I ran into, um, an old colleague, I guess we did a show together, um, she was an assistant director in a show. Um, anywho, I haven't seen her in a long time and I saw her and I introduced and I was like, not introduced, but I initiated and like, sure. Oh, Hey, let's call her Annabelle. Um, so like, Oh my God. Hey, Annabelle. I don't know anyone named Annabelle, by the way. <laughs> so it, was like, hey. the, it was the name of a really lame prequel of, uh, the conjuring. Oh yeah. Oh. Never saw it. Yeah. Um, it was lame. All right. Uh, so I'm like, oh my gosh, hey Annabelle, how's it going? She's like, just, just continue walking, like, hey, what's up? Yeah. And just walking by, like, what the fuck? Right. Now, I can't tell, now, here's the, this is my thought process during this moment, like, oh my God, did, have I pissed her off in the past sometime? Two, is she just running late? Maybe she just needs to go. Um, three, maybe I'm by somebody that she doesn't want to be around, like, you know, like, I'm thinking all these things. Like, why isn't she just stopping and saying, hi, why don't you want to talk to me? What's going on? Like, we, we, we've known each other, not like, um, what's the best way to put this? Not intimately, it's not the right word. Well, it is. I mean, intimately can be worked. Sure. Um, or through, um, you know, we were just, we had a relationship in a show, a bit like, you know, business, like she was, um, she's a director. I was a star, uh, star. Ha! I was an actor. Um, so that, that, that was a relationship. Star, you hear me? So like this whole time, I'm trying to force a conversation with her, and you could tell like she doesn't want to talk to me. She doesn't sure. want to like be there, and I can't tell like what's going on. I'm trying to like make small talk. Like I haven't seen you in a while. What's going on? What are you doing? Good One word you. answers. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And 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 it, I just got the vibe from this person like she just doesn't want anything to do with me. Um, and I and then I think about that after I'm like, what the fuck did I piss her off before in the past? What have I done? Why is she? Why is she acting so cold to me right now? And did you? Did you just instantly be like, you know what? I don't even care. Whatever. Uh, or did you dwell on it? I dwelled on it for mm, shortly a, shortly afterwards. Okay. And then right now I'm talking about it. Like, sure. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I don't give a shit. And I don't. No. I mean, it's it's funny because I, uh, I have had that. Ex- I had literally, I had that interaction not too long ago myself where it's just like, wow, I haven't seen this person in a really long time. I'm excited to see this person. And the other person just really didn't seem excited to see me. And I was just like, all right. Part of the reason that I also just don't dwell on things like that is because you really never know. I mean, sometimes you do. Like if, like I've known you forever. If you were going through something and we were talking, I could tell similarly, vice versa. You could tell if there's something wrong with me. If I'm off my game, you know it. If you're off your game, I know it. Yeah. But a lot of the times... Sometimes when it, it's been a long time since you've seen somebody, uh, for whatever reason, they dropped off a map, you know, you don't talk to them as often anymore. I never presume things. So it's just, I don't, I would never presume that I did something wrong, which is, it's kind of selfish, but I, I also don't presume things because you don't know what that person's going through. So at that particular moment in time, when uh, me and this person saw each other, I, I was really excited about the reunion, but maybe they had a bunch of other stuff going on that was just weighing them down where it's like, it was a friendly interaction. There was no hostility, but Mm -hmm. at the same time I felt like I was way more excited. Sure. But I, I don't dwell on it because it's like, okay, well, Hey, maybe something's up. Uh, I'll call, I'll come back uh, and visit again and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, a couple of weeks and see what's up. That's why my biggest thing, not really off topic, but like, that's why I don't look into first impressions very much. I think first impressions are important for a job, opportunity uh, or something like that on a professional level first impressions are important like good handshake eye to eye, uh, good yeah. eye contact um you know that sort of, like that sort of mentality of first impression because you want to be looking you know professional but i'm saying if you're meeting like a friend of a friend or someone like that 
and you get a bad first impression. I don't look too far into that because you don't know what's going on with their lives right now. Like maybe someone died in their life recently and they're, this is the first time they're getting out just to get out of the house or something like that, just to do something. Or maybe um, they, they just had, uh, you know, 20 bucks stolen from them like 10 minutes ago. Or, you right. know, like what if like you don't know what's going on with their lives. You don't know this person. And that's what I mean by first impression. You have no idea. So, yeah, yeah you want to always try and give a good first impression. But I don't like, oh, my God. Did you see the way this guy looked at me? Like the like the first person, fuck this guy. Like I was so what? And, they, and then it's really just the long, ter- like the, after a couple of engagements. Is right. How the I the feel only like. time I really count first impressions would be professionally. Yeah, um, me too. But in yeah. in kind of going around what we have just been going and dwelling on stuff, and uh, I also just like when I encounter other people who don't. Um, sure. And again, I've had like two, two recent like funny instances where. I offered to help somebody out with something and then didn't hear from this person for like nearly a month. And then the first thing I hear from this person is, hey, can you still help me out with this? And I was just like, well, no, I'm sorry. I'm busy at this point in time. I I put that offer on the table like weeks ago. I don't feel bad about it. I didn't dwell Mm -hmm. on it. I let it go by. haven't heard from this person since because I couldn't help them out in that particular moment in time. Um, Again, reasons not to dwell on things because why... I don't want to sit there and be mopey about it and be like, well, I don't understand why I didn't get the call. I didn't get asked to help. You know, I offer yeah, the service. And, 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 and also we're talking about a lot of different situations right now from professional to friendship to, to meeting personal, people yeah. to, well, when I say professional, that's different angles right there. I'm talking about like a corporate job interview versus professional, like in an audition, like I was doing, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. You know, my, it, it, and so I just need to get better at it faster is what I'm just trying yeah. to say in terms of like after it happens, fuck it. I don't care. Like I don't care. Yeah. If someone happened with you, it's different because I've known you and you're like my best friend. So uh, family member, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But for something like an audition, like I fucked up that audition. Well, I, and, and, and there's also this fine line, especially with a job interview or an audition or something like that, where it's not about dwelling, but you, sh- I don't think you need you. It's not about forget it and move on. you need to remember that to learn and so to learn what you did wrong or why you think this happened right. and then improve upon it. Not dwell on it, but you still need to reflect on it. Well, you need okay. To- and yeah, that's, that's Bruce Lee at his finest, right? Oh. Absorb what's useful. Ooh. Take it and leave the rest. What? So that's like the, one of the greatest co- quotes he's ever had of all time. Basically, take everything that you need from it, drop all the rest, and progress. Be the water. Just be water. Be the water. Um, but yeah, no, what I was saying is I love meeting people who... Who have that similar mindset? Uh, as I'll take one as well, please. Who have that similar mindset? And um, I just reconnected with a friend of mine who I hadn't seen in a while. She has a super busy schedule, and we kind of had a similar discussion uh, because we made some jokes that you know it's like we hung out for a hot minute, then all of a sudden we just didn't see each other for like a month or two. But then it was just like, hey, we're here, we're hanging out, we're having lunch, and it's there. And she even brought it up, and she's like. I can't stand when people just, it's like, give me shit about how I, I, you know, I'm not there. I don't respond to this. I don't show up to this. And I was just like, I cut her off and I was like, what? You just need to handle you sometimes. And she's like, yeah. And I was like, I get how busy you are. And and it was just, she's like, I know she's like, you had to move and you had all this stuff going on. And I was like, yeah, but again, going into the next topic. Yeah. And it's (laughs) like, yeah, but yet here we are having lunch because fuck it. We hadn't seen each other in a long time, and now we're right here having fun. Exactly. There you go. And that's the biggest thing I've learned. Another, like, there's a lot of things I've learned um, in the last seven years, I would say, doing comedy and improv and sketch and all that stuff. Is you know, one, there's, I could say, like, I can try and narrow down everything into three points. And one, I'm not going to go into this tirade of a lesson plan or anything, but the number one, one of the top three things is live in the moment, live in the yeah. present. What's happening now? What's going on right now? Don't dwell them out the past. Don't right. be f- afraid of the future. What's going on right now between you and me or what I'm doing right now? And that's the thing that, you know, it, 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 and honestly, too, I'm much better at much better at it because, well, I'm not going to go into this. This could be its own topic. When I was in my, I don't say, early 20s, I was suffering from really big, bad case of OCD. And I think... I mean, I'm, I'll probably write a book on this someday or something like that, but it's like improv was a big help of that, uh, overcoming my OCD. Um, and I mean, I was like, actually, like, I'm not saying OCD, like, you know how people are like, oh, I'm just OCD about this right now. Like, no, I was actually like a psychologist even like said, no, you're OCD. Um, 
So it really helps to focus on the present right now, focus on what's going on right now and not be dwelling and not be afraid of the future. And we're always going to have fear of, of what's to come. Like if I quit my job right now, but focus on what I want to do. Yes. Money, family, income, yeah. blah, blah, blah. It's terrifying. Yes. But like shit, <laughs> me currently, <laughs> you got to do something, you know? I mean, and sometimes and you got to take a risk sometimes and that's scary, but like you can live in the moment and be like, I'll figure it out. I'll figure yeah. it out. Um, there's, and then I honestly, to tell you the truth, everyone I tell it to, I know there's always someone they can fall back to or rely on in case the shit, you know, hits the fan, but don't dwell. I'm, I'm better at it. I'm not great yeah. at it, but I'm better at it. it yeah, like, just keep getting what better It used at to be it. like weeks and months at a time came down to a week at a time, came down to days at a time. Now it's like down to hours of a time. Right. You know what I mean, I don't, I, and I don't know if it'll help, but to kind of give my final like thoughts on, on that scenario, uh, again, my like little personal mantra, and it kind of came full circle with uh, the girl I was, I had forementioned, I won't mention names, but who I was hanging out with. Let's give her a fun name too. Yeah. Let's give her another A name. Let's say Annalisa. Annalisa. Annab okay. Annabelle and Annalisa. So it kind of came full circle because it was very cool to me to meet, uh, to well, and I, I guess I just hadn't known this about her previously, but to meet somebody who's kind of the same way where it's like, in my mind lately, and I mean for a while now, it's always been, this is me, this is the path. You're in my path. You come along. If you want to go with me, great. If not, totally fine. Good luck with everything. Uh, if I see you again, awesome. If not, best of luck That's in right. life. That's right. And the difference between real friends and Facebook friends, people. Right. And I think sh uh, it was cool to find out because for her, I think it's very similar where we kind of had that conversation. And it's like, well, yeah, we met here. We both came here. And then all of a sudden, we crossed paths again. And Hey, no big deal. Um, we went out. We had fun. It was awesome. And I was just like, all right, well, we should probably try and get together sooner than two months next time. But if not, I understand you're busy. I got a lot of stuff going on. Yep. But let's say in touch. Boom. Keep going forward. And speaking of moving forward, let's move up forward to our next topic. Oh, that was a, such a good segue. Oh, my God. That was good. Yeah. Moving forward. Um, keep on. God, keep it on. Which God. is also a really good segue into this topic. Ooh. Moving on, moving on.